Now we move on to our next presentation. Um, Mohammed Ibrahim, who is here in the flesh. Please go ahead, please come here. That's fine, yes. Mohammed is looking at um, differences in utilization of digital tools for information operations between state and non-state actors. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I, I'm Mohammed Ibrahim, to be in this. He's also sometimes deacon at Melbourne Sharam. I want to thank you all, first of all. And before I start, yes, I also want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we stand on today. So all protocols observed, as I say, in some of the corners. Um, my presentation is about um, state and then state actors and how they use digital information. As you mentioned, strategic digital information operations. And thanks, Sharan, also for that paper. That was quite informative, and I enjoyed that very much, and I actually used some of it. And my paper, after I started, I went to Somalia, and now I'm including a case study about Somalia. So I want to update that as well. So people who are reading it, probably you'll find a bit more information on the final version. So what I really want to cover it's the following, just as an outline, I want to talk about in general about this issue and then use the Somali case study. And the background is really why is this important? This whole area, why is it important? Why digital technology? Well, everything is important, but more specifically on digital information operations strategically. And the areas I will look at are mainly on democracy and social cohesion. I will mention some examples about in that part of the world where I came from, especially in the Gulf, nowadays free SIM cards at airports are very common, and I'll explain what that means. And the issue about consent and what is actually consent itself, but all of that based on from two perspectives, which are the states and then non state actors. But I want to challenge you with that question that I'm adding, which is really what's even the difference nowadays? It's becoming very blurry what is a state and what's not a state. And the phrase that's becoming very common is this idea of plausible deniability. You know, with governments do something, but then all of a sudden it becomes something else. I want to start with this. How did we get to here? And for a long time, I used to like this cartoon. And the idea was technology was moving very fast and education was starting to catch up. But now I'm going to update this. And what I want to say is actually it's not really education, but it's actually governments who are trying to catch up with technology because technology is moving so fast. And parliaments only see a few times a year, and the legislations go through, take months and months. In the meantime, the Googles, the Facebooks, the X, or whatever we want to call them, are already developing things so fast that by the time the rules come into law, it's already too late, things have changed. So that's really the background. Now, this is very, very possible. What I'm really trying to explain is as a background, nowadays we talk about what we call the fourth industrial revolution. And this is where the digital information operations come into. In other words, the previous industrial revolutions, and I just put them there for those who want to read later on, there was not really a lot of information technology, but now everything seems to be about ICT and later on what I would describe as what's happening in the fourth industrial revolution, which is convergence of technologies. And when technologies converge, then state actors benefit. And I will explain a bit more what I mean by that. In Somalia, for example, the technology industry, the telecommunications and the finance have merged. When that happened, the only group that are enjoying or really are happy with that are the private sector, because no rules, no regulations, no governance. So they come up with all these digital currencies, mobile money, what have you. They make a lot of money. But on the other hand, there's no rule, there's no regulation at all. So when that happens, there's a danger, huge danger on all of us as a society, on democracy, and so on. Why? Because all of a sudden, we lose our contribution. We have no say in what's happening. 
And we can see that as an example on the technologies we use nowadays, that we don't give consent, but our data is everywhere. Uh, people are using them, selling them, whatever, whatever, but the rules are no longer there. Now, in the beginning, when technology was in the early days, we all knew we went to school and university, and we knew the internet, we knew the web. But those who are really into it, there were two things that sometimes were useful to remember. In that area, there was something called the deep web. The slides are the one we talk too fast. And then there was also the dark web. And I, I want to explain these two ideas within the context of what we're getting into when we talk about the digital information operations. The deep web is like what we do with the university and banks or whatever, where basically it's allowed and we can access certain information, but within rules. And then there's a dark web where we have absolutely no control. Anything goes, a lot of people abuse. And nowadays, both state and not the state are there. Even governments are there looking for information or trying to chase people that they think they're criminals and so on, but also I guess people who want to abuse the technology are mainly there. Now, why is this important? It is important because all the things we're dealing with, when they're out there, it's easy to find the police can find us or the, the, the people who enforce laws can find. But when you're in this area, it becomes a bit hard when you're in the dark web and so on. And more importantly, while we were worried about those two, all of a sudden something else came up. And yesterday I was happy when Sharan mentioned the idea of the age of AI. I thought I will elaborate this because all of a sudden, while in the beginning we knew what we were doing and we were comfortable with that, now things are happening at a different level. And what do I mean by that? What it means is with machine learning, it's actually possible that we can impersonate someone. We can have Biden talking or myself or someone else, but we don't know whether it's the right person or not. But also the same thing with content and all sorts of things can happen. I'll give you one example, which I actually did for my own uh, research myself. We all are familiar by now, I guess, with chat GPT, and a lot of people use it, although it's a bit controversial whether the content is accurate or not. But now you can have your own. You can actually make one as I did here, as you can see, that particular one is my own. I actually made my own, and it's about Somali history. So what that really means is, it's my own version of Somali history. <laughs> so if you don't know, and you're using that, all of a sudden you think, oh, I'm on job QPT, and I'm asking questions about, tell me about Somalia, who runs the country? And it's my same, Hamad runs the country. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and then you, you can see the danger. You can you look as much Okay. You've created your own universe. Yeah, yeah. So what, 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 what the risk is, imagine if I can do that, what governments can do, or people who have more money and, and non-state actors or what have you. So it gets very frightening, because what that means is, if you're not aware, you go in there and you say, oh, well, look, I'm reading about this, and it seems to be legit or semi-legit, but nevertheless, what you're all seeing is my own version of the world. It can get even more complicated. You can load your own books. You can load your own papers. This is if you're reasonable and honest about this. Then you put all your work there, and then your students, you can tell them, look, don't waste your time getting all this information. Here's all you need. Now you can use the JavaScript and get what you want. So you can see where we're going with this. It's getting very interesting, I guess. So as the Chinese saying is, we might all read this interesting time. Now, here are now some specific examples I want to share with you. <coughs> Excuse me. State and state actors. I, I challenge you with the question, what's the difference? And the reason I'm saying this is, in some countries where I go, I really find it very difficult to know who runs the show. It's very difficult to know. And I will use my own country, for example, Somalia, the telecom, the finance, it's not actually the government that runs it. It's the private sector. And now you can see how dangerous it gets. Now, what that means is those, let's say, for example, the Shababs who scare us and who cause all the problems, sometimes they can be more active online than the government itself. 
or the Amazon or the UN people. The example I'm giving you here, and I'll allow you, or if you get a chance, you can read the paper. What's happening here is those slides are from the Shabab guys. And by the time they put all that information online, the government takes days to do the same thing. So they were ahead, in other words, they informed the people on what they're doing real time, whereby the government and the UN guys take days. So all this indicates that sometimes it gets very scary when you think the United States actors can actually be more proactive or ahead of the state itself. Now, this other example I'm trying to, so I admit this person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, that's, that's <laughs> All right. <the> person. <laughs> All right. Now, even at individual level, what you now see is my digital footprint. These are things I do myself. And now the reason I'm sharing this with you is with all those things that are different platforms that all belong to me, if I were interested, if I was, for example, trying to propagate some idea, I can write something because I've got some technical background and I can spread that to all those platforms. Now, if I can do that as an individual, what can an organized group can do? What can a non-state group can do, or even a state for that matter? So you can see the risk of what the technology can do on both sides. I'll just continue very quickly because I want to Yesterday, as it happens, I was actually in a Zoom meeting, and these people I'm hiding their faces are authorities in, this, in Australia. And the question now I'm asking is, who's in charge? If we have all these challenges in the technology, who runs the show? Who's actually running this and who's doing something about it? So I had posed the question yesterday to these people who are in charge of some serious platforms in Australia and globally. And you can see the answers because you don't see their names, you only see my name. <clears throat> the answers they're giving is it's all out there. No one is really in charge. You know, when it's, these things happen, and basically that's the way it is. But let me explain this area just a bit more. All the things I was discussing about happen online, they either happen virtually or they happen on specific webs or so on. We trust the systems. We assume someone is in charge and these things are controlled. But in reality, even at that level, at the national level, at global level, sometimes that might not be the case. So this particular example I'm trying to share with you, this is Australia. We all know, for example, Australia, we have a domain. They call it CCTLD, the country code top level domain. It's .au, everyone knows. But did you know in Australia, there are also another four CCTLDs, the CX, NF, the CC, and HM. These are another CCT, like another country, but they're all in Australia. Where do, who do they belong? They belong to Christmas Island, Norfolk Island, and another two small islands, Cocos Island and HM is, I think, uh, in fact, I can tell you exactly what that is. Um, it's the Heard and McDonald Islands, very, very tiny. Islands. Why is this important? The reason it's important is we all worry about cybersecurity, we're all worried about um, online stuff and what have you. So the government, Australian government, is very careful to make sure that AU is well controlled. In fact, you cannot get a domain name on that AU unless you're Australian, Australian company. On the other hand, like I just fly to Christmas Island and register. In fact, the Brisbane City Council uses one of these <laughs> uh, dubious. Um, uh, domain names. So the reason I'm mentioning this is while we worry about what many selectors are doing, or even sometimes the states, there are also all these anomalies, all these areas that are gray, that all these things happen. And I will just leave that with your thought to think about. So the people we trust, the governments, I can, I can, the people who run the names and numbers for the internet, internet society, the International Telecommunication Union, the RIRs, maybe you haven't heard of them. They're the people who actually assign uh, numbers, the IP numbers to all governments. For example, the African one is called AFRINI. Now, as a trivia, let me just share this with you because I'm familiar with this. The AFRINIC version, we lost a lot of IP addresses, IP version four. How did we lose them? Some Chinese business person bought them. Now, 
we don't know what they're used for. So I'll just leave that thought with you. And these are more details about me. Over the last few years, that's where I was, and that was my interest. And as you can see, some of them went up, some of them went down. And the one that's continuously going up is my interest in community. And as the concluding remarks, I just want to leave those thoughts with you, especially the last one. And I won't read, but you can read them all, and I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm trying to get the camera to look at you, but uh, somehow the angle doesn't quite work. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right, now we have two discussions. Thanks for sticking with the time, Mohammed. That's very, very considerate and also very rich presentation. You're right on dot. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so we have two discussions for your presentation. Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mohammed. This uh, fascinating. Uh, I uh, after I uh, read your paper and uh, uh, attend your the, the the presentation, I I have a two small uh comment. Uh, the the first one is that uh, you mentioned about the state and non-state actors. Uh, however, in your paper, you uh, I think it would be more complete if you uh, uh, include political parties in the in the non-state actors, because there are uh, many many evidence that uh, political parties in many countries have used that kind of uh, SDIOs. Uh, in terms of uh, especially uh, when it's come to be an election, uh, the evidence in, um, I guess, in the, the Philippines and also in Thailand where uh, the election took place at, uh, this year. I think uh, it would be more complete if you can uh, uh, mention a bit about the political parties, uh, although they this is not in, in the, in the uh, main interest of, of your 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 paper. Uh, the second one is that uh, uh, the relationship between the the non the state and non-state actors because uh, I think uh, you mentioned one of the um, internet research agency uh, the, the the IRA the 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 Russian company. Uh, I'm not sure whether this could be uh, classified as state actors or, or non-state actors, because if you, uh, as we know that this company has influence in the uh, many uh, important political campaigns in the, uh, the US presidential election and also the, the Brexit. I'm not sure that uh, this company can do that without uh, uh, approval from the Russian state. Uh, so uh, I think uh, in your case study, there is a conflict between state and non-state actors. But this case, I think uh, there is something like the, that they uh, go along together to, to do something. Uh, so it might be interesting if you can uh, give a, a small example of what type of the relationship between the state and non-state actor to cooperate in the doing the SDIOs. Uh, that's, that's all my comment. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mr. Kuhl. Um, I'd like to now invite our other discussant, uh, Robert Fleet. Are you able to turn on your camera? Yeah, sorry, Dan. Go ahead, please. Yep, sorry, Dan, Dan can't be here, so I've taken over from him. So I'm, I'm playing you. a bit of catch up. I haven't quite finished reading the paper, so um, I, I apologize in advance for that. But I think um, similar to the some of the last last speaker yes there's some some interesting definition definitional issues around state actors and non-state actors i think that we can see um in a lot of the work that we do around these kind of operations um you know state what's the difference between state sponsored versus you know non-state actors i think is an interesting question that needs to be addressed and um 
it's just one of those things that I think all everyone in the room is aware of that we kind of need to think about when we're talking about state and non-state actors, of course. Uh, it's interesting in, in the presentation that, um, you know, we've, we've picked up on the idea of the, you picked up on the idea of the industrial revolution and how things have changed. And I think finishing with chat GTP was interesting about how knowledge is produced. I think maybe that's, that's an interesting thing to pick up on is like thinking about um, the production of knowledge um, in, in that way as kind of taking a historical view of it and where, where we've arrived in this kind of like post-truth or post-fact um, uh, world about how that how that's produced and now with the rise of um, machine learning and, and chat GTP um, how the authenticity and veracity of the data that's produced by um or let's say mis malicious actors or, or you know or whatever we want to call those people um has the nature of that has changed and how easy it is now to sort of produce that but on the flip side of that how e how we might leverage those tools to combat misinformation um and sort of the other thing that i picked up on which i found interesting especially given the somalia example in the case study that you, you've produced is like the kind of on the ground truth of who's producing the knowledge that is being consumed um like you know how you, you talked about the time lag between um the actors on the ground and the official state position being um put forward is um you know it, it, whether it's a kind of first to market question um to answer on that one is like you know whoever controls whoever gets the information out first may control the narrative i think that's quite an interesting point um Sorry, I, I kind of like still haven't finished reading the paper. So um, that's kind of where uh, my thoughts have got to now. That's that's perfectly fine, uh, Robert. I have to uh, thank you for stepping in at such short notice, uh, given that uh, Dan had to take care of a sick child, I believe. And I think we all agree, uh, family <laughs> trumps uh, work. Fair enough. So thank you. I appreciate your uh, stepping in and your comments. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Mohammed if there are any points that you'd like to share and respond to our discussion before we move on to the next speaker. No, I, I just want to thank them. I think that was a good contribution. Thank you very much. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks, everyone. Now let's move on. We are moving very quickly to our next presentation. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, sorry, to sorry to interrupt. So, sorry. Uh, 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 would you mind if I add something uh, to my comments? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mohammed, uh, there is, in terms of the state and non state actors, there are many papers of the of, uh, Institute of Internet that compare the use of. Uh, computational propaganda between state and non-state in around 30 countries. So uh, the name of uh, the author is um, Bradshaw and Howard. Uh, the paper is uh, in the year 2017 and, and 18. Uh, so it might be useful to, to see how they compare the organization and uh, the the tools that you in in uh, several countries thank you <laughs>